This conference will now be okay, recorded. Okay, Xiaoqian, uh, you can take over now. Okay, uh, for the introduction, uh, I was uh, asked to provide some update on the NGD atmospheric physics project. Uh, in the past couple months, we have made several quite uh, interesting programs in this project. Today, I'm going to show some of the results from our recent efforts to improve the dinocycle precipitation in E3SMV1 with a modified convection triggering mechanism. Uh, in next talk, uh, which is scheduled a couple of weeks later, uh, Yaga Richard will present her effort to improve the QBO uh, for E3SMV1. So there will be several talks regarding the atmospheric physics uh, project. Uh, in the next couple of slides, I'm going to show you uh, the issues with the current climate model in simulating the dinocycle precipitation, and uh, also uh, what area we probably need to emphasize to improve the current uh, deep convection scheme, particular on the convective trigger, I will show you some the, uh, idea we have and also per, uh, per some of the observational evidence in support of those uh, proposed change for convective trigger. Then I will show you the results uh, from the 11 years AMAP run in EAMV1 when we implement this scheme. Uh, for the EAMV1 simulation, I only emphasize on um, seems relevant to precipitation. So as we know, uh, the climate model, uh, even including weather model, continue having the difficulty in simulating the dinocycle of precipitation, specifically over land. Uh, so the common problem is the rainfall occurs too early after sunrise and the too frequent to wake. Uh, most models uh, fail to capture the nocturnal peak over the central grid plan, and also there is no eastward propagation of mesoscale convective system from the Rocky Mountain to the central grid plan. This is a uh, uh, very outstanding feature in dino cycle over the central U.S. So like I showed uh, in this figure, uh, this figure uh, it shows the dino cycle or precipitation over the arm SDP domain. The black line uh, I showed here is from the arm, if you can see my mouse. Um, all the green lines actually is the CMAP file models. I did not uh, name them. And the color one is, uh, the red one is the default Easter item. Uh, this, I believe, uh, is one early version of V1, and the blue one is we test in the, uh, the club, actually, uh, before we implement club into Israel SM. Uh, with the, probably the red one is a V0, then the blue one is we add the club, and the blue, uh, actually, green one is uh, from the Unicon uh, earlier convection uh, candidate scheme we use. So you can see now of them actually can capture the uh, the peak at night, the nocturnal peak in the dinocycle precinct. So this is the pretty common problem. And also, all those problems uh, cannot be easily solved by just simply in, increasing the model horizontal resolution based on various studies. So uh, there's something we thought probably uh, is to lead the convective triggering because the convective trigger determines when and where the convection occur in the real world and also in uh, the in the model. So uh, in general, you know, the cape-based trigger is widely used in current deep convection scheme. Uh, usually, it assumes that the cape larger than zero. That means you have a convective instability. All cape larger than uh, uh, arbitrary threshold, like 70 uh, joule per uh, uh, kilogram 
at Yoast in CAM1, in CAM and also EAM V0 and V1. So where CAP is usually calculated from uh, error parcel origin from the boundary layer. So uh, like uh, showed in the ARM data, you can see the black line is the observed precipitation. The right dashed line representing the CAP calculate in the, using the ARM data, you can see if uh, the trigger is based on CAPE, that means you will have convection triggered almost every day during the uh, daytime. This is for the warm season. So uh, definitely, you know, we need some, you know, constraint on um, the CAPE trigger. So uh, the earlier study uh, believed that uh, the problem with model in simulating diamond cycle process is related to the unrealistically strong coupling of convection to surface heating, such as if you use cave-based trigger, then you will have, you know, the positive cave almost every day due to the software insulation. And also, uh, the current triggering function is lack of convection inhibition that can be used to suppress convection. And also, uh, uh, there is uh, no clear way to uh, parameterize the large-scale uh, dynamic and thermodynamic con con controls on the onside of convection. But there are some uh, uh, studies showing that those are quite uh, important. So you can see for the nocturnal preset, you know, the uh, convection is already elevated and also the surface, the boundary is very dry. It's decoupled from the uh, middle troposphere. So that's why if you use uh, uh, cape based trigger, it's hard to trigger, you know, convection like that. That's probably one of the reasons why most of the model cannot capture nocturnal uh, precipitation event. So in this work, we emphasize to improve uh, the two key areas. One is we have to think a way to prevent the convection from being triggered too frequently, specifically during the day. Another area we emphasize is to try to find a way to capture the elevated nocturnal precip because the boundary is really dry. So you have to uh, think a way how we can capture you know, the instability above the boundary. So what we do? Uh, actually, for the first one, uh, we introduced a dynamic cape generation rate to control the onsite of deep, deep convection. This idea was proposed almost two decades ago, uh, actually, in my PhD study uh, when I worked with Minghua Zhang. So we tested this scheme uh, in CAM2 and also is currently being tested in Japanese uh, uh, meteorology agencies operational numer uh, NWP model. We, the basic idea is the DKB is calculated actually is the difference in CAPE between a uh, hypothetic atmospheric, uh, the CAPE calculated from a uh, uh, hypothetic uh, atmospheric state like the T star, Q star, and uh, also the CAPE calculated uh, under the current atmospheric state. The T star, Q star equal to T and Q plus the uh, total advective tendencies of temperature and, uh, and the moisture. So basically, you know, the uh, uh, physical meaning of the decay is the contributions from the large scale forcing or large scale advective tendencies. So for this, in uh, the Zhang uh, Xie and Zhang 2000 paper, we propose this idea, uh, the new trigger requires, you know, not only cape larger than zero, but we also need uh, D cape larger than zero. There has some, you know, uh, uh, support from the arm observation. You can see at the SDP side, the, uh, blue, uh, the black line is the observed the precept, the dashed line is the D cape. You can see the positive D cape correlated very well with the observed precipitation compared to the cape. Much, uh, this represents much better correlation to the observed precipitation. So by using the DK, actually you directly link the convective trigger to the large scale dynamic forcing. Particular, you know, like the low level convergence 
and also the upward uh, large scale vertical mansion. But the DK may not work for some of the elevated nocturnal convection case. For example, this is another case we identified uh, in uh, one of the arm field campaign. You can see uh, uh, the circle here is the nocturnal preset. Uh, if you use the cape and the D cape, uh, but you know allow the air parcel just or limited the lifting level below the boundary layer, you can see uh, both cape and the D cape. Uh, you don't get any cape and D cape. So that's why you know the nocturnal preset cannot be. Uh, triggered during uh, at night. So this is the sounding uh, over this case. You can see that the boundary is really dry. So usually, you know, the cable DK based on, you know, the surface forcing uh, usually cannot generate positive values. So the convection won't be triggered. So in order to solve, address this issue, we implement uh, another uh, idea like the we call the unrestricted launching level is called the ULL trigger. You know, in the current DM scheme, the air parcel, the original air parcel has to be lifted within the boundary layer. Uh, there are some concerns uh, in when we implement the scheme in uh, NCAR CAM and also ISRSM. So, but right now, you know. By using the ULL trigger, we remove this constraint. We uh, allow the air parcel launching level can be at the level above the boundary layer. We are searching, you know, the level for the maximum monitor static energy uh, from the surface to uh, any level below 600 millibar. Uh, in the original day, is allowed, uh, they searching the maximum moisture static energy only within the boundary layer. So this is the difference. We remove that constraint. Then that uh, allow us to able to capture, you know, the elevated convection above boundary layer. When we implement uh, this uh, new scheme, like by combining the d -tape, and also the ULL trigger, we tested with the ARM data for different uh, uh, climate regions, like we use the MC3E data, this is as STP, uh, TWPI data is at the Darwin side, and uh, Go Amazon field company is at the Amazon region. So you can see the uh, new trigger cor correlated uh, much better with the observed precip than the Tape only trigger, which is presented by the right line. This is what you get from uh, using tape only. You can see, you know, for those uh, tropical cases, every day is a tape, you know, is larger than zero. Uh, if you use this like a trigger, you will have convection occur every day. But when we use the new trigger, actually is much, much better correlated to the observed precepts. So let's look at you know, the uh, nocturnal case as SDP I showed earlier. Uh, when we could not detect the tape by you, uh, if you know the air parcel launch level at the surface, but right now you know by removing that at least we see you know some you know tape over here that actually allow you know the trigger of the convection. This, uh, this is based on the single column model test. When we implement the idea to ESRS and V1, uh, I will uh, skip this slide because uh, you know you're supposed to know what we have done uh, from V0 to V1, and uh, I just show you the experiment we did. Uh, we have performed the four sensitivity tests. The one is using the default model. Uh, all the runs based on one degree and the 72 layers. We have not run this with our quarter degree model. And also run the 11 year AMAP paper run. Uh, the data analysis uh, from the uh, year two to year 11. So this is the default model. Like the convective trigger is larger than 70. This is the threshold uh, currently used in the model. And uh, the DK plus ULL is the one we propose. 
uh, you can see the DK. Uh, we not only require K larger than zero, we also need the DK larger than zero. That means you should have positive contributions from the large scale forcing. And uh, at the same time, we also allow the unrestricted uh, uh, parcel launching level below 600 uh, millibar. Now, you know, limited within boundary layer. Uh, yeah, yeah, in order to test the, the individual, you know, uh, DKIP and the ULL contribute. I'm sorry. Uh, contribute uh, to the changes we see uh, in the new trigger. We also test, you know, uh, conduct separate tests with DK trigger only and the ULL trigger only. So I will show the results from this. First, let's look at the mean state. Uh, this, the left figure shows the difference between the control run and also GPCP. This is the model bias we have. Uh, everybody knows that we have, you know, overestimate the purchase over, you know, the most of the traffic, and but uh, have a dry bias over uh, the South America or Amazon region. And this one shows the difference between the new trigger and also the control run. If you see the color is opposite, that means you uh, reduce the bias we have in the default model. Uh, note that only the difference that are statistically significant are shown in this figure. So you can see in general, the overall impact is minor over most of the region, only a few locations you see uh, some notable difference, uh, but the difference usually uh, to update the bars we have in the default model, such as over the Amazon region, you see, you know, uh, we reduce the bar, uh, dry bars a little bit by producing a little bit more uh, precise, and also the subtropical region, uh, the convection uh, suppress a little bit, then we have less precise compared to the default model. So uh, anyway, the impact is quite minor, and uh, that also means, you know, even with the revised trigger, we will still have this type of model bars. You won't see it if I uh, plot, you know, the model bars, uh, this, uh, the uh, revised trigger minus GPCP. You will see similar figure like that. So if you look, you know, uh, which cause those, you know, uh, minor changes uh, by looking at, you know, DK trigger only and the ULL trigger only, you will see most of the change showing in the revised uh, trigger coming from uh, by the use of DK. So this is uh, for the mean state. Uh, this figure shows the donor mean per total precipitation. Uh, from different uh, models. You can see uh, all the models overestimate, you know, pretty safe over most of the global. Uh, that's like I said before, you know, if you really look at the model bars, uh, most of the bars are still there. But if you look at the partitioning between the convective and the stratiform precipitation, the, the lower panel shows the convective precipitation to total precipitation ratio, the ratio uh, like uh, of convective precip over total precip. You can see that by using the new trigger, like the green line is the DK, so the red line is the new trigger, the DK plus ULL, you can see a clear reduction of convection component over the subtropical regions in both hemispheres. So that means uh, by implementing the DK, it helps to suppress the precip, uh, particular over the subtropics where the, the stratocumulus uh, cloud dominates. So this figure gives you some idea about the frequency and the intensity simulated uh, in these models. So the up panel shows 
the light to moderate precip, uh, like precipitation larger than one millimeter per day and the minor 10 millimeter per day. The black line is the GPCP data and the others are the model. You can see that all the model overestimate the frequency uh, for the light to moderate per se. This is a common model problem, like, you know, if too frequent, too weak, uh, the, this uh, figure shows the intensity for the light to moderate per se. You can see all the model underestimate the intensity overestimate the frequency. But if you look the figure carefully, you can see with the new trigger, we uh, reduce this problem uh, quite considerably, you know, but still the problem is still there. For the uh, moderate to heavy precept, you can see all the model actually uh, capture the frequency quite well. But uh, the default model or ULL still uh, largely underestimates the intensity for the uh, moderate to heavy precipitation, uh, specifically over the tropical region. This problem, again, uh, is reduced by using uh, the D cape and the ULL together, and also mainly due to the D cape, which represent by the green line. You can see it's quite clear. So that means uh, by the, our the new trigger help to reduce the frequency for the light to moderate precip and uh, increase the intensity for the moderate to heavy precip. Okay, finally, let me show you uh, how those uh, new trigger uh, help improving the diagonal cycle. This is uh, the summer diagonal cycle over the counters. Uh, as uh, you know, over this region, the diagonal cycle featured like the daytime precip uh, initiated uh, over the eastern edge of Rocky Mountain, then propagated to the central grid plan at night. So uh, you can see the color presented here, representing like the red color means the peak of precip occurred at the noon time, then green and uh, the cold color here, like the peak, occurred at night. So you can see for the default model, it's not able to capture either the propagation of the mesoscale system along this region, and they always, you know, uh, have pretty peak uh, during the day. But with the new trigger, you, you can see the phase of precipitation is nicely simulated. Then we uh, want to see which one contributes to this improvement, we found that if you only use the D case, it won't help, like I showed earlier. Uh, those nocturnal precepts usually elevated, so if you only use D case, they may, they may not work uh, for this. But you know, with the ULL, when you remove the restriction of parcel launch level, Within boundary layer, you allow it, you know, launch above boundary layer is nicely captured the nocturnal elevated convection. That actually is the key for the improvement for this region. Uh, we also look at other regions. This figure shows the marine uh, time continent and actually the land. You can see that. This is the trim data. This one is the default. Uh, is not able to capture the nocturnal peak over those land, tropical land, with the revised trigger is nicely captured that. Again, when you look in the individual uh, contribution, this is mainly due to the ULL trigger, which removes the constraint of convective uh, launch level within boundary layer. We also uh, look at the eastward propagation uh, more carefully. Uh, uh, in the next slide, I'm going to show the uh, the uh, uh, room for you know uh, average over these four regions we call it mountain region, highland, midland, and the lowland. This is from the trim for this four region. You can see it's nicely actually it's propagated from the Rocky Mountain to the uh, Central uh, Southern Great Plan. 
if you look the you know the control run is there's no any uh, signal for those kind of east word propagation. But if you look at the results from using the new trigger, the combined trigger, it's very nice if you just compare the fig, uh, the color of the air, you can see. Uh, but definitely you still have some issues uh, in capturing exactly the time when the mm, preset picked, but the propagation signal appears. So that's actually, uh, if you look at the individual uh, trigger, uh, the combined trigger has a better um, performance than any of using DK only or UL only. We also look at you know, the dyno cycle over other regions like uh, tropical North Africa, uh, North America. This I already showed, then the tropical South America, Central uh, Bonaro Island and the Western Pacific ITCC. If you only combine, uh, look at you know, the uh, black line is the observation, the red line is uh, the result from the combined trigger. And the dashed line is the, either from the control run or from using individual trigger. You can see that the combined trigger actually well capture you know, the observe the precipitation over all those selected regions. We are not randomly select all those re uh, regions. Actually, this is the region uh, included in NCAR AMWG uh, variability package. So we found actually for all the regions they include in their package by using the new trigger, the dyno cycle, the face of dyno cycle is well, well captured. But we do have problem in the magnitude, like I showed in the earlier slide. You can see even we capture the propagation, but you know the magnitude is much weaker uh, than what observed. So let's uh, have a brief summary here. Uh, we propose a new convective trigger uh, to and also test it with E3SM V1. Uh, the convective trigger includes two parts. One is uh, providing a dynamic constraint to prevent the cape being released simultaneously. Another one is to remove the restriction of having air parcel launch level within boundary layer in order to capture elevated nocturnal presets. The new trigger has a minor impact on the mean state, but it leaves a significant improvement in the face of the dyno cycle. Uh, although its magnitude is still too weak. Uh, if you look at the individual contribution from these two different components, we have shown that the DK will actually have the part daytime precept while the unrestricted launch level is a key to capture nocturnal elevated convection. Uh, and also the model start to show some signal of the uh, eastward propagation of metal scale system but you know the process behind it still need a better understood. Uh, we also look at the MGO, the tropical wave. We found only have minor change in those fields. We have a paper recently accepted by James on this work. Uh, I provide a link here, like the DOI number, but it has not wor uh, work. It's not working now. Uh, it should be working in the next couple of days. That's it. Hello. Yes. Hey. Um, Xiao Chang is is really nice. Uh, I don't know whether this is time for a question, but I do have one question. If if there is time. Yes. Please go ahead, mm. Ruby. Okay. Yeah. Yes. So Xiao Chang. Uh, yeah. Regarding your your uh, next to the last point about um propagation of MCSs. First of all, I wonder if whether you have plotted any Hofmuller diagram to see indeed they are propagating. And I, I'm curious about the mechanism as well, because um, well, I, can, I can understand the unrestricted launch level to be helping with nocturnal precipitation, but how that is helping with propagation is unclear because the mechanisms of 
so at least some of the mechanisms for propagation related to cold pool and things like that, gravity waves and things like that, it's pretty difficult to, to stimulate. So I, want, I wonder what, what you think. Yeah, uh, actually, um, I record we have a uh, half Muller diagram we did. Uh, it shows uh, some signal of eastward propagation. I believe um, this is because actually, uh, even you know, the model cannot uh, fully resolve the metal scale system. But with the decay, we probably can feel uh, the impact of the propagation of metal scale systems and capture the instability at the right time at any single location. If even if you know, like you know, uh, it's not like uh, 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 like Langer, uh, you know, like Langer, you know, uh, approach. But you know, you can look at you know at any uh, particular location, you feel this impact of the magnetic. Once you yeah. capture the the precept, actually, you put things together, it look like you propagated, but yeah, may not really propagate. Yeah. Right, I, I am wondering about that as well. I mean, because we can understand why the unrestricted launch level affect the timing of the precipitation, but whether it is actually creating a system that is propagating is unclear to me because the propagation mechanism should be pretty difficult for these kind of parameterizations to capture. Yeah, I agree. Mm -hmm. And actually, we have done some preliminary uh, study on this, you know, try to use the reanalysis data. Mm -hmm. And because one of uh, a separate study Xue Zhang did, actually she found that, uh, like the large scale um, circulation and the precipitation is well correlated uh, when, you know, the massive scale, you know, eastward propagation started in the observation. But there is a decouple between these two fields in the model. Mm -hmm. So uh, she feels that probably that's one of the reasons why model cannot capture that because the uh, the loose link between the large scale like you know, convergence, mm -hmm. low level convergence and also uh, the precipitation events. So I think with this we, we directly couple these two together probably could help. So we we are doing some uh, additional investigation on this, try to understand mm -hmm. why. All right, uh, great. By utilizing yeah. the, uh, the cap. Actually, I agree with you. This is something uh, we also <laughs> noticed that, you know, how to explain this. It's mm -hmm. real propagation or, or not. Yeah. All right, hey, thank you. Xiao Chen, this yeah. is Rin Jian. Did you look at the uh, spatial? Resolution dependence by applying this new trigger. I, I guess the results that you present today is from the one degree simulation, right? If you apply this new trigger to quarter degree or one eighth degree, are you expecting to see same or even further improvement? And um, actually, if you look at the the definition of D cap is uh, uh, directly linked to the large scale forcing, like the large scale advective tendency. That means, you know, it should feel the scale change because, you know, when you increase the model resolution, the forcing will become strong. But we uh, had a preliminary uh, check on this. We quickly run, like using the RRM uh, strategy, we found actually the resolution uh, as a simulation is getting worse. So that means we there are still a lot of work, you know, we have to figure this out. This why this is the reason. And also in a separate uh, study Guangzhang did uh, recently they found actually the DK is quite sensitive to the uh, spatial resolution. I also need to read his paper and uh, understand why. So it's, uh, okay. in brief, it's sensitive to model resolution. Uh, there's something we are currently looking at. That's interesting. Thank you, Xiaochen. Yeah. 
so we are running out of time. We can take this, this uh, interesting conversation offline. So thank you, Xiao Chen, for the presentation, and thank you, everyone, for calling in. Okay. Thanks all. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs>